All right, in this section we're going to work on solving equations that have radicals in them. And we begin with a note of caution. And um, that is that um, it is possible to get extraneous roots with these types of equations, which means, what that means is you can get, you know, through, through making no algebraic mistakes, you can just get results that aren't actually solutions. So you'll find the solutions that, that um, of your equation, but sometimes there could be extra solutions that you find that aren't actually solutions for your equation. So for that reason, you're, you want to always check your results. Um, this is not like, you know, when we were working with equations with fractions, all we had to do is make sure that we didn't divide by zero. Here we do need to make sure we plug it in uh, the original equation and make sure that um, that the equation holds for all of our results. So um, the procedure that we follow for solving an equation that has radicals is you're gonna, you know, maybe maybe there's several radicals, right? But you pick one radical and isolate it, then you square both sides, or if it involves a cube root, you'd cube both sides. If it involves a fifth root, you'd raise both sides to the fifth power um, to get rid of that radical. And then after you're done that process, you should have an equation probably with one fewer radical than you started with. So then you might just need to repeat that process, pick a radical, eliminate it. Um, and then if you will eventually get an equation that has no radicals, that we know how to solve. Um, hopefully that we know how to solve. Usually we do. So we're going to begin. Here we have an equation with a single radical um, and we're going to isolate the radical. And really this radical is kind of already isolated. We could choose to divide both sides by two um, if we wanted to, but um, what's important is that I'm not adding. I don't have any, you know, plus another radical or plus x or plus five like there's no other terms on the left side the only there's a single term on the left side and involves that radical so if we want we can um just start by squaring both sides here and uh we are squaring a product on the left side so we're going to distribute this exponent over the product and when we do that, we get 2 squared is 4. And when we square this radical, uh, we just get what's inside, 3x minus 1. And 3x squared is 9x squared. I'm going to distribute the 4. So we have 12x minus 4 equals 9x squared. This is a quadratic equation. And we know how to solve quadratic equations. We learned about that in the last semester. So I'm going to gather all of my terms on one side. Um, I like having a positive x squared coefficient, so I'm actually just going to throw everything on the right side. I'm going to subtract 12x and add 4. So I have 0 equals 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. And um, I'm going to see if this factors. We, we have other options. We can complete the square if we like, but I think this might factor. I think it factors like this, 3x minus 2, 3x minus 2, because that gives us negative 6x and negative 6x, which is the negative 12x there. Great, so we have, as it turns out, uh, 3x minus 2 squared, right? It's just, it's just a single repeated uh, factor. So that means that 3x minus 2 equals 0. Usually we'd break this out into two equations, right? We'd say 3x minus 2 is 0, or the other factor is 0. But of course, that's the same thing. So uh, we only have to solve this once. Uh, if 3x minus 2 is 0, that means that 3x is equal to 2. And if we divide both sides by 3, we get x equals 2 thirds. Now, hopefully that is a solution, but we're not going to finish this problem until we check our solution. So uh, the original equation, 2 times the square root of 3x minus 1, so that would be 3 times 2 thirds minus 1, and we want to know is this equal to 3x, 3 times 2 thirds. Okay, so on the right side, 3 times 2 thirds is 2. On the left side, 
3 cancels with the 3, so I got the square root of 2 minus 1, uh, which is square root of 1, which is 1. So that's 2, which does equal 2. So that checks out, which means x equals 2 thirds is a solution. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's solve this one. This involves a cube root. Uh, again, this radical is already isolated, so uh, we don't have to go through that part. Uh, we're ready to simply cube both sides to get rid of that radical. When you cube a cube root, you just get what's inside, x minus 8. On the other side, uh, 2 cubed is 8, and if we add 8 to both sides, we get x equals 16, which we hope is a solution. We're going to go over here and check. The cube root of let's see, 16 minus 8, is that equal to 2? So on the left side, I've got the cube root. 16 minus 8 is a cube root of 8. That is, in fact, equal to 2. So that's our solution. So far we've solved equations where the radical is already isolated. So here's what I mean, you know, here's what it'll look like if maybe the radical is not already isolated. We have a radical and then we've got this other term, plus 3. I need to isolate the radical first. That, that step of squaring both sides will not result in eliminating a radical if that radical is not isolated first. So we're going to subtract 3. This gives us the equation square root of x minus 1 is equal to x minus 3. And now that I've got that radical by itself, now we can square both sides. On the left side, we are squaring the square root, so we get x minus 1. On the right side, we are squaring x minus 3. So you're going to have to FOIL that out or use the grid. When you do that, you'll get x squared minus 6x plus 9. Here we have another quadratic equation. I'm going to get, again, I like to have a positive x squared coefficient, so I'm going to get everything on the right side. I'm going to subtract x. I'm going to add 1. So we have 0 equals x squared minus 7x plus 10. And again, I can, I can complete the square if it doesn't factor, but I think this will factor. x and x, um, and I think minus 5 minus 2 will work. So this means that either x minus 5 is 0, or x minus 2 is 0, and that gives us x equals 5, x equals 2. So we have found two solutions, two potential solutions. We need to check them both. It's possible for an equation like this to have either both of these work, or neither of these work, or only one of them work. Um, so we really have to make sure we go through and check them both. So let's check x equals 5 first. The original equation looks like the square root of 5 minus 1 plus 3. Is this equal to 5? So that's the square root of 4. That's 2 plus 3. That is equal to 5. So x equals 5 is a solution. Now we check the other one, because it's possible for them both to work as well. So OK. If x is 2, then the original equation looks like the square root of 2 minus 1 plus 3. Is this equal to 2? So that's the square root of 1 plus 3, which would be 1 plus 3. 1 plus 3 is not equal to 2, and that means x equals 2 is not a solution. Um, you have to make sure that you go through the check and state finally what your answer is. If you go through this work, if you're working on a, an assignment or a test, um, 
if you if you just say this one's a solution and leave this and you haven't checked it like I don't know what that means or maybe you cross it out like I, in order if you want to score a five you really want to make sure that you show this part for all of your solution candidates All right, so now we're going to finish up this section and this chapter by solving this equation. This equation that has two radicals in it. So I need to start by just isolating a radical. It doesn't really matter which one you choose to isolate first. Um, I'm going to isolate the square root of x plus 1 first. So I'll subtract the square root of x minus 4 from both sides. Now we have the square root of x plus 1 is equal to 5 minus the square root of x minus 4. Now that I've isolated a radical, I'm going to square both sides. Uh, the left side is easy. I'm squaring a square root, so we get x plus 1. On the right side, remember, we cannot distribute an exponent over addition or subtraction, so I'm going to write out what this means. This is 5 minus the square root of x minus 4 times 5 minus the square root of x minus 4. We need to multiply this out. So I'm going to go up here and make my little grid. So in the top row we've got 25 minus 5 square root of x minus 4. On the bottom row, minus 5 square root x minus 4. And then plus, it's a radical times itself, so that'll just be x minus 4. Um, let's combine like terms. So we have, first of all, I guess we have a plain old x term. Um, we have constants, 25 and a minus 4 is a plus 21. And then we have our radical terms. It's a common radical. We can combine those like terms. That's a minus 10 square root of x minus 4. Okay, so now this after we've isolated a radical and then squared both sides, here's the equation we're at, here's the equation we're left with. It still has a radical in it, but here's what's important to notice. We started with an equation that had two radicals. This now is an equation with one radical, so we're moving in the right direction. Um, I'm going to isolate this radical, so I guess I will subtract x and subtract 21 from both sides. That gives us, uh, let's see, on the left side I've got negative 20. On the right side I have negative 10 times the square root of x minus 4. And you could at this point say I'm going to square both sides first. Because 20 is a multiple of 10, I'm actually going to start just by dividing both sides by, I guess, a negative 10. That'll simplify things a bit, I think. So I've got 2 equals the square root of x minus 4. Uh, now, um, I'll square both sides. So we have 4 equals x minus 4. And that gives us, uh, let's see, if we add 4 to both sides, we get uh, x equals 8, or 8 equals x. So now, before we put this problem to bed, we need to make sure this is actually a solution to the given equation. So we're going to check the original equation. If I plug x, if I plug 8 in for x in the original equation, it looks like square root 8 plus 1 plus square root 8 minus 4. And we want to know, is this equal to 5? Um, okay, square root 9 plus square root 4 is 3 plus 2, 
that is equal to 5, which means x equals 8 is a solution.